Hi, I'm Rocco, and today we're in Venice Beach at the Rose Cafe, which is a favorite eatery of Rob Delaney, uh, who's a very funny comedian and what some have termed the king of Twitter. He writes a column for us at Vice on the website, and today we're going to have breakfast with him and chat about eating vaginas, Rick Santorum, hairiness, and all sorts of other fun stuff. I'm here on a lovely Wednesday morning with the lovely Rob Delaney. Hello. The first thing you did for us and how this relationship started mm -hmm. was a piece in our LARFs issue a couple, yes. a couple years back. Yes. Um, and the piece was called Comedy. It was. It actually opened the issue. Yeah, well, I had been uh, approached by your magazine to write for them uh, anything I wanted, essentially, about comedy. And I remember lamenting that most magazines, when they do a comedy issue, it's usually really awful and unfunny. So I really just tried to sort of plumb my uh, depths, so to speak, psychologically, and just talk about my motivations for doing comedy, what I think is funny, what's not funny, why it might be funny, what sort of drives me. Because I like comedians, I like other comedians, and I like fans of comedy, and I wanted to give them something, you know, like this, that would hopefully nourish them. I wanted them to have this sandwich. Um, the subject matter of that article sort of laid the land at that point in your life what you were doing, mm -hmm. and um, you told me earlier that you were, I don't know if you were at the time, but right, right around then working at a call center, but also oh, yeah. doing comedy, and mm -hmm. this was a year and a half ago. And, yeah. um, but you also talked a little bit about what happened to you 10 years ago, mm -hmm. um, which you, you can say it much better than I can. Yeah, well, yeah, I'll, first I'll say you're right. Okay. I'm very uh, lucky right now to be making a living doing comedy, but it was just 10 years ago that I was in a big car accident that prompted me to quit drinking. But uh, yeah, I drove into a building in LA uh -huh, and broke both my arms and was in jail in a wheelchair. And, uh, and it was then that I was like, oh, if I keep drinking, it, it'll kill other people. And I didn't want to kill other people. Uh, I don't like to kill people. Sorry, guys. And uh, so after I kind of physically got better from that accident, I uh, said, oh, I'm a comedian now. So, I mean, do you remember the first time that you uh, found out what, what Twitter was? Well, the first time I heard what it was, mm -hmm. was I think I was at a comedy show okay. and somebody mentioned it. Uh, I'd heard about it maybe on the news or something and it sounded very unappealing. You know, <laughs> why, who cares? I was on Facebook and Louis C.K. said that he had joined uh, Twitter. And I thought, well, maybe, he usually does things that I think are funny and intelligent. I should check it out. So I did. And uh, what I tried to do was just post jokes um, rather than like, I ate this. So where did your uh, twi Twitter picture, I don't know if it's an yeah. avatar, but you're, yeah. you're in Speedos. Um, yeah, I am wearing a Speedo bathing suit. And that is a bathing suit that I do genuinely own because I live very close to the beach. So if I go swimming in the winter, I will wear that because it just makes more sense under a wetsuit. So I uh, totally am aware of the fact that it's a disgusting look on a hairy, large person. Uh, but basically I was getting ready to go swimming at night with my wife and my friend John was there and I took off my clothes and had the speedo and he was like, Jesus. He took a picture and then when I first signed up for Twitter, I thought, oh, this is so stupid. I'll put the worst picture of me that I have up and that's it. And uh, then after a while, people were like, you gotta get rid of that. And I was like, no, I'll never. And your last, <laughs> we'll, we'll say your last two tweets. Pepsi's uh, Twitter account said, the best place to hide a Pepsi is blank. Mm -hmm. And Rob responded. Uh, in a cop's asshole. Uh, nothing, I, I, cops, we need them, I like them. But uh, it's the word cop, it's a cop. So I've always thought cop was a funny word. I have words that I just think are funny. Uh, just the sound of them. Phonetically and yeah, like yeah. cop, uh, cock, ham, <laughs> cock is a funny word. I love the word ham, beef, a lot of meat related words. So ham, cop, huh? cop's just such a nice word. And anyway, so, and then asshole that just always makes me laugh. Okay, um, and your tweet uh, before is uh, Virginia is for lovers, and in parentheses, of psychotic, in all caps, abortion bills. Mm -hmm. So why did you tweet that? 
there right now in Virginia, some lawmakers have uh, drafted a bill that would require women who wanted to get an abortion to get an ultrasound. Now, what is a big part of this is that when a woman is in the early stages of pregnancy, the fetus is super tiny, so they can't use an over-the-belly ultrasound. They actually have to put a probe up her vagina to do the ultrasound. And it's a big fucking wand. It's like bigger than like three of my dicks. And they're putting it up, and that's like, so it's like robot rape. It's beyond, I mean, that's psychological torture. Yes. It's physical torture. It's unbelievable and fundamentally wrong. One thing you really like to talk about is women in a way that I think is positive, mm -hmm. but also very honest. I do like to take a more, uh, I don't know, proletariat approach <laughs> to like sexuality of like a blue collar, sweaty, fun approach to sex. And I genuinely really feel the things that I tweet about that, you know? Um, like I don't like it when women shave off their pubic hair. That is a legitimate thing that I feel. That's weird to me. And maybe it's because I'm a man and it's easier for me to see, like it's easier for me to, to, to be an other and see like, oh, I see this thing that's happening to these, this group of people, which represents more than half of our planet's population. And it's so fucking wrong that I'm gonna do my little bit that I possibly can to try and help. So women usually, the overwhelming majority are, are funny and nice. And they'll probably write a zinger back to me that's funnier than what I wrote. You, you've had quite a few tweets and columns about uh -huh. uh, the current Republican candidates. <laughs> yes. Who would you say is the best to make fun of? Um, probably Rick Santorum, mm -hmm. uh, because he's uh, the antipodes of how I feel about m many things. I feel like his policies, if enacted, uh, would, would hurt people. I feel that he would have a really negative effect. So if there's something I see that I think is having a negative effect, I'm going to use comedy to, to, pre to pre present my ideas and to eviscerate the ones that I don't like. When was there an, uh, I, we'll call it a exponential explosion of Twitter followers? Like, when did you hit like a, a marker where you're like, wow, I have 50,000 people following me on Twitter? Getting to 100,000 followers took for what felt yeah. like forever. Okay. Going from 100 to 200 was like, going from 200 yeah. to 300 was like, oh, it happened, it's crazy. So the speed that you accumulate them gets faster. But the big, the big thing for me was uh, after years of submitting packets to late night comedy shows and being told like, oh, this is terrific, but not getting hired, I uh, at the same time got hired by Graham Linehan to work on story ideas for the fifth season of the British show, The IT Crowd. Mm -hmm. um, and also, uh, I got hired by MTV to write for a Rob Deerdeck show called Ridiculousness. So those had two things happened at the same time, and uh, Vice Magazine said, hey, wanna write this comedy article? Some of the most popular pieces you've written for us, mm -hmm. and I would imagine tweets as well, mm -hmm. have concerned the nature of celebrity. Mm -hmm. um, specifically, a piece you wrote about suing Kim Kardashian mm -hmm. after her uh, divorce. Yes. Um, how serious were you? 100% uh, about the feelings behind it. I think that what she did was wrong. We know it was fake from the outset, so I just wanted to say no, young lady, and Ryan Seacrest, and E! Entertainment Television, and Comcast, who were also named in the lawsuit. And you're also writing a book. I am writing a book, yes. The book uh, has nothing to do with Twitter. Yes. It's a uh, it's a memoir, novel type thing. Since I am a relatively young person, I understand that people uh, wouldn't want to read a book about just my life. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to write that. So I uh, am trying to, I'm filtering it through the cheese grater of my joke writing trained mind to make sure that it is entertaining because as a comedian, it's my job that everything that I do be funny. And at the very least, compelling and pull you along.